Well, hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Carolyn Williams here with Heart Fellowship Church and Money Reverse. Come right on in. We are here for TNT, boom, <laughs> Thursday night teaching from Heart Fellowship Church in Prosper, Texas. Come right on in, everybody. As usual, I'm going to come in at least a minute too early just to make sure everybody gets settled in and I make sure all my technology is working well. So come on in. And when you arrive, say hi in the comments. Say hi in the comments so that I know that you are there with me. Welcome, everybody. We are here to talk about the Seeds of Wealth Part 3. Hey, Miss Coretta. Hello, hello. <laughs> come on in, everybody. It is, we have one minute. So I always come on just a little bit early. So thank you for saying hello in the comments. And thank you for joining. Thank you, thank you. I think I am about ready. I think I am about ready. And looks like it's time to start. Hello, pastors, white. Yay, yay, yay. <laughs> so again, Carolyn Williams here with Heart Fellowship Church and Money Reverse. We are here for TNT. Boom. <laughs> Our Thursday night teaching, Heart Fellowship Church in Prosper, Texas. I have a lot of teaching for you tonight. So I'm just going to jump right in, start with a word of prayer and jump right in. So if you will join with me in prayer, stand with me in prayer and stay prayerful throughout the teaching, that is going to make such a difference in how the Holy Spirit kind of mixes in with what we're doing here today, because we're not here trying to put on a show and we're, we're here to help to usher in the anointing in your financial life. That's our goal here. So join with me in prayer, everybody. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We call upon you today, Lord, and we just want to say thank you. We honor you. We worship you. We give you all glory and praise. No other God before you, God. No other God like you, Lord. You're our healer. You're our lawyer, Lord. You're our provider. You are our peace, Lord, and for that we thank you. Thank you for joining us here in this Thursday night teaching session, Lord. I thank you for being here with everybody that's live, joining us on the broadcast. For those that are watching this on the replay, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will still permeate through the digital media with those on the replay so that they feel the anointing from you. Lord, we surrender all to you. We cast down anything that may be telling us we're too busy or any interruptions, Lord, we, through our will, cast that down and we ask that you remove it from our mind so that we can focus on you. Lord, we turn our hearts over to you. Please speak to us, Lord. Speak to us in a way like you never have before in the area of finances. Lord, thank you for the rhema word that you're bringing to every individual that's seeking you diligently today. And these things I ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's get started. Again, we are going to talk about the seeds of wealth. The seeds of wealth. I want to share with you the seeds of wealth teaching. So first of all, let's let me tell you about what we're doing. We at here at Heart Fellowship Church, our pastors White are here, Pastor Cedric and Pastor Michelle White, they are here with us, so they're in the the chat, the chat in the comments. So definitely reach out to them if you have any questions. But just know we are in Prosper, Texas, but we do many, many, many things digitally, including our Thursday night teaching. We call it TNT. <laughs> TNT. I'm putting my ear up so I can hear it. I can hear it. Boom. <laughs> so now every second Thursday, we have a financial teaching that's open for anybody that wants to. So if you're here with us live and on us, our Facebook page, on our YouTube channel, and you want to invite others, please do that now. If you're on Facebook and share this out, please do that. 
uh, just to let people know on your timeline that this is a teaching that you think that they it would be worth their while. If not, just let me teach for about 10 minutes. And then if you want to share it, then you can do just that. So so I want to tell you, we are here to talk about the seeds of wealth. Part three. Now, this is a series that we're going through. I'm going to explain about how the series is going. But I just want you to know parts one and parts two. If you this is your very first time in a heart fellowship kingdom wealth series, this kingdom wealth session, when we're talking about the seeds of wealth, can you just put in the comments first time? I want to know those of you that are attending for the first time, which means you don't know about parts one and two. And if you're watching this on the replay, same thing, just say replay first time, because I want you to know if this is your first time coming to a heart fellowship, Kingdom Wealth series, Seeds of Wealth, that's OK. We're at part three. But just know all of the other teachings are available to you on our Heart Fellowship YouTube channel. And what we did last month is we did a summary of parts one and two in a single teaching. So you can go and watch one Kingdom Wealth session and get parts one and two at the same time. Or you can go back and see those sessions, the individual sessions, which are more detailed, all that on our Heart Fellowship YouTube channel. So if you have not subscribed to our Heart Fellowship YouTube, that's something you want to do right now. I think that's that will be a good thing for you. So we're going to talk about the seeds of wealth, part three. And in this session, we're going to talk about controlling pest. Lord, 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 <laughs> controlling pest. Let's go back and let's start at the beginning to make sure that we're all talking the same language. I want to define wealth. Wealth is having an abundance of valuable material possessions or resources, having an abundance. And abundance simply means having more than you need, an ample quantity. So this means having more than you need of valuable material possessions or resources. That's what wealth is. I want you to know that wealth is not, you know, having one million, two million, three million. There's there's not a number. Wealth is a financial condition. So if you need to have, you know, five hundred dollars to pay all of your bills this month, and you have $600 this month to put towards your bills. When it comes to your monthly expenses, you're, you're in wealth today because you have more than you need. If you have more than you need on a regular basis, you're walking in wealth. And that's what we want to work toward. So just so you understand what we're talking about, we're, this is not the name it, claim it and all of that. No, 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 no. We're just going practical practical, you know, wealth building and life life skills that you can use right now. OK, now what I want to do is also share with you one of my favorite scriptures, Psalm chapter 112, verses one through three. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed Wealth and riches will be in his house and his righteousness endures forever. This is one of my favorites. This is Psalms again, 112 chapter verses one through three. Take a look at verse three. Wealth and riches will be in his house. Now that his is not capitalized. That doesn't mean God's house. That means your house and it means my house. And that is that is true if we follow what's in verse one who fears the Lord and delight greatly in his commandments means we do what the Lord is commanding us to do. And it's important to us. So it's important that we live a life that's outlined by Christian biblical scripture. So we should expect that wealth and riches will be in our houses. If you believe that, or even if you don't, I would like for you to make that declaration about your house. If you can, and if you would, can you just type in the comments and say, wealth and riches will be in my house? That's a declaration. And when we declare a thing based on who we are, we speak it into existence in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. Now, I want to also share with you, wealth is the residual value of using intelligence, purpose, and Holy Spirit guidance in the handling of money and resources. 
Wealth is the residual value. Wealth is what is left behind when you use intelligence, purpose, and Holy Spirit guidance in the handling of money and resources. So again, I want you to know what wealth is. So with that, we I want to make sure we're starting at the same place. Okay. Now, we do have an assignment here. The seeds of wealth, I want you to grow something. I want you to grow something. Now, th th this is really using a lot of biblical agricultural terms when it comes to wealth. So just to help bring this to life, I have a plant. I did not bring my plant in here with me as I'm teaching. I wanted to show you what it looks like right now. But let me tell you, your assignment is to grow something. I want you to grow something. That's the only stipulation I'm going to have. I want you, it could, you could grow it indoors or outdoors. You can put it in a plot pot. You can put it in the ground. You can use a, a seed or a starter plant. The one thing is that I want you to start it small. OK, I don't want you to get your house plant that's already beautiful and say that's what I'm growing. I want you to start something new so that you can associate it with this particular program. So with that, I want you to grow something. And when you grow something, I want you to use this QR code that's right here on the screen and just share with us. Scan over that. Act like you're going to take a picture of that. And then it's going to give you an, oppor an opportunity to. Um, you know, share with us to upload some pictures, tell us who you are and what you're growing, because I'm going to report out what our plants look like. So I have my plant. Let me show you what I'm growing. So again, I want everybody to take this challenge of growing something. We started this session a bit ago, so you can kind of see my growth journey. This is what I'm growing. In the center is my Amaryllis Ferrari. This is just the sample plant in the center. You can see where I started here on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, this is what it looked like in November. And let's keep on going. Let's show you what it kept looking like. Here we go. Look at November 21st. November 30th, and then 12-1, look at my beautiful flowers. 12-15, my flowers were spent, <laughs> but it was beautiful. Now, I want to tell you, I am still growing this plant. I am still growing this plant. Yep, right on time. I want you to share with us what you are growing. <laughs> now, I normally have my plant here with me. I don't have it here with me now, but oh my goodness, my mom is in town with me. And she is um, she watches this plant every day because I call it the dancing plant because it, the leaves come and they're just fanning this way and the other. There's no more. There's no more pods. There's no more blooms. I just have these green leaves that are coming out. And they'll grow and then they'll die off and then a couple more will grow and they grow very fast. And it's just fanning like this. One day they're standing straight up. One day they're crossing. So my mom is amazed by this plant. So. This plant, I see it every day when I go downstairs. It is right in a very common area in the house. And it is what I associate with this program. So I look at it and this is my seeds of wealth plant. So I want you to do the same so that as we're going through these concepts, you got something that can help you to put not not just hearing the words. I want you to actually look at it and, and use this to help you to make the analogies toward growing wealth as well. So if you think you want to grow something and share it with us, just put in the comments. I'm growing something. I'm growing something. I want to know who's going to be joining me and growing something with us. So now let's see. I did hear from I did hear from some of you last. Look at what we have here last after last month. Uh, Miss White, El Nader White. Hey, everybody here is white. <laughs> El Nader White, uh, she started growing after our um, actually this was as of April 7th. I got this update from her. This is her potato plant. It's actually a sweet potato. And she started it right after we had the session last month in March. And so it is growing. If you see, you may not be able to see, but it is all the way up here working toward this window. So she was so proud of her plant. She has lots of plants, but she started this one right after last month. And so what I want to do is see some of yours as well. So with that, yeah, I see Lupe says, I'm growing something. Yes, Coretta says she's planting succulents tomorrow. If you can just go over this QR code and just share with us, because I 
I don't want you to give up on the plant. And I don't want you to give up on wealth building. I want this to become a part of your life. So just share it with us. And we have some accountability. Good deal. Now, cultivating crops. Those of us that grow something, if you're a farmer or if you like to plant and like to grow, these are some concepts that you're familiar with when it comes to cultivating crops. Number one, you prepare the ground, you plant the seeds, fertilize, control the pest, harvest the fruits, and then you prepare for the next season. These six concepts are what we're using when we cultivate plants. Now, we're going to do the same thing when it comes to cultivating wealth. So what we have what we have talked about in this series, we've done a, a series on a session on preparing the ground, planting the seeds and fertilizing. This one, we are going to go through controlling pest. And we are going to use this analogy as we're talking about cultivating wealth. OK. So we're going to do plants and wealth, and I'm going to try to keep it straight with you, but it's we're going to talk about controlling pests today. Now, what a pest is, huh? what a pest is, a pest is an epidemic plant, animal, or activity that's detrimental to humans or human concerns. A pest is an epidemic plant, animal, or activity that is detrimental to humans or human concerns. Hmm. If you look at this picture, this is a beautiful picture of some type of a worm. I don't know what type of a worm is it, but isn't it pretty? I love those colors so much that I match the colors on the slide of the worm. This is a pest. This is detrimental to humans or human concerns. Now, when we're talking agriculture, it would be human concern, which would be the plants. When we're talking to wealth, it is going to be the pest or the things that are detrimental to our human concern, which is our wealth. OK, now I want you to know a few things about pest. Pest cause damage to crops. Pests often attack in groups, and this is when we're talking about agricultural, okay? So they often attack in groups. One worm can't do so much damage, but you know that pests often swarm and they come in groups. <laughs> now, inflicted damage stunts the growth or kills the crops. Now, this worm would probably more than likely eat the leaves of a plant. Now, what the leaves of the, of the plant does is the leaves allow the sun to create food for the plant through photosynthesis. So guess what? If your plant has no leaves, there's no way for it to take in the sun to create food for the plant. So if you say, okay, the worm's just going to eat the leaves, but then the plant is damaged, the growth is even stunted and sometimes it will kill the plant. Now, pest attacks can return each season. If you say, OK, we got these type of worms here, just know that same type of worm. If you plant the same thing, you probably will see that same type of worm next year. And pests can be insects, animals or diseases. You can have uh, root rot or you could have you know, deer that come in and eat your plants, or you can have worms or some type of bugs or locusts or different things like that. So this is where it comes to plants. So with that, I want to kind of share with you some of the curses of the pets that we pest that we found in the word. There's five scriptures here and I want to go through them. I want you to go back and look at this. Look at Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. In verse, on verse, fif, verse 15, it says, if it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all of his commandments and his statutes, which I've commanded thee this day, this day, then all these curses will come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, anything, everything after verse 15 is about the curses that will come upon the individuals that did not 
listen to the voice of God and observe and honor the commandments that have been passed on to them, then these curses are going to overtake you. Now, number 38, verse 38, thou shall carry much seed unto the field and shall gather but little in, for the locust shall consume it. That's a curse that's going to come. You're going to plant lots of things, but you're, you're not going to bring much in from that. Okay. Verse 39, thou shall plant vineyards and dress them, but shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes for the worms shall eat them. Sounds like a pest to me. Verse 40, thou shall have olive trees throughout all thy coast and thou shall not anoint thyself with oil for thine olive shall cast its fruit. The olive fruit is going to drop on the ground before it's time. It is not going to be fruit that you can harvest. It's going to be fruit that's going to fall off and rot. And then the last one, all thy trees and thy fruit of thy land shall, be, shall the locusts consume. So here's the curses of the pest. Now, this is Old Testament. So I do want you to know that in the day, pests were mentioned. Oh, my God. When I studied pest here in the word, it was always about taking away something that you have of value and and not and, and taking it away in a way that is going to be where it's going to be very difficult for you to stop it because it's going to be swarms, lots of locusts, lots of flies, lots of, of things coming to take away that that has come to you. So I just want you to know Deuteronomy 28, this is a curse of the pest. So go and look at that as well, the curses of the pest. Now let's talk about controlling the pest when we talk about wealth. Pest damage your wealth plans. A pest, when we're talking about wealth, is anything that's going to come in and damage your plans. Your plans cannot be carried out because this thing is happening. Pests are often small and ignored. Sometimes it's not something big. It's the small things that end up eating up your wealth. Pests are often not seen as pests. Hmm. That's not a pest. That's my friend. <laughs> I was talking to somebody about this teaching. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what he said in a minute. I'll tell you what he said when we get to that slide. Uh, pest, attack, pest attacks can return each season. If you plant corn this year and you see worms get in your corn, and you do some things to get rid of the worms and you plant corn next year, it's a very good chance you're going to see that same pest return. So now all of this is talking about your, your seeds of wealth, your plans, your activities to move into wealth. So I want to talk about these pests. Some of this may be a little bit mm, touchy. If, if I say anything in this lesson that is touchy to you, can you just put in the comments, ouch? Just put ouch. You only have to say what it's for. I just want to know. I was praying the Holy Spirit. Yeah, the Holy Spirit was really directing me and, and just sharing with me how this can be very sensitive to some people. And even if you're not here watching this on the replay. And I said, Lord, it's not that it's not that sensitive. I, I'm thinking it's not that sensitive. But the Holy Spirit just reminded me that, yeah, Carolyn, you've been you've been doing this for a while. But some people may not realize that they have pests that are keeping them back. We're trying to plant seeds, but then you're letting the pest eat it up. Take a look at this picture. There's a there's a, a snail. There's a snail there. You can see the little holes in the leaves where the snail has been. And guess what he's doing right now? He's eating more holes in the leaves. So what I want to do is share with you five pests that damage wealth and wealth building. Five pests that damage wealth and wealth building. One is ignorance. One is mis mismanagement, ignoring the, the, ignoring the issue. A third pest is failure to give. Fourth is being weary and well-doing. 
And the fifth pest is charity, not charity. So again, five pests that damage wealth and wealth building. We're going to go through each one in detail. The first pest that damage wealth and wealth building is ignorance. Is ignorance. Does anybody know what this thing is, what this picture is? is of that's on the screen if you know what this is a picture of put it in the comments and let me know ignorance is having a lack of knowledge education and awareness you just don't know about wealth you're just going from day to day when it comes to wealth you're just going from day to day getting a paycheck spending money doing things you're just not even aware of what the lord has called us to do and not aware that you could even be working toward building wealth. You just you just don't even have the knowledge. So I want you to look at Proverbs 27, 23, and 24. Be diligent to know the state of your flocks and attend to your herds. For riches are not forever, nor does a crown endure to all generations. This is where the Bible instructs us to know what's going on with those things that are our wealth. In Bible times, that's how a person's wealth was determined, by how many cattle and how many herds, how many flocks that they had. That was how we determined how wealthy a person was. The best example of this is just to go to the book of Job and look at how Job was described before the Lord agreed to let the enemy uh, work with him. <laughs> and if you look, it didn't say Job had a 401k, Job had lots of money. It talked about his children. It talked about, but mainly it talked about his flocks and his, and his herds. So this says be diligent to know. You need to know what's going on with this because wealth does not last forever if you don't. And if you don't do this, you're not going to be able to pass everything da anything down to a next generation. So with that, I want you to know that this instruction is out here for us. And, and, and this, if we don't, if you're ignorant, please know that we need to know what's going on. Um, so ignorance is a lack of knowledge, education, or awareness. Does anybody, I didn't see anybody put in the comments that they know what this thing is. That's a picture. And I'm going to tell you, I didn't know what this thing was either. I saw this in my house. It's tiny. It's tiny. It's like it's like a big mosquito, but it has long wings. It almost looked like a, a an angel's wing. So but they're tiny, like the size of a mosquito. And I saw them in my house and I, I didn't know what it was. But let me tell you what this is. This is a termite fly. This is a termite fly. Yeah. Yep. There you go. That's what it is. This is a termite fly. I have had seen these in my house. I didn't know what it was and I didn't, you know, pay attention to it. I'd get out my home defense and just start spraying, you know, because I sprayed and make sure that I did. I don't like bugs, but I'm from the country. I can deal with them. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I grew up in the country. I grew up on the dirt road. So bugs don't scare me. I will deal with them. Okay. But I went to have my house painted. And one day the painters called me and said, Carolyn, uh, we got something to tell you. We went to touch the door facing. We were going to paint the frame around the door and we touched it and our hand just went completely through. There's no wood under there. This, it was only paint. The paint stayed and the wood was gone. You know why? This little booger. This is what the painter saw. When they went to touch the facing on the door, they touched it and it just cracked. There was no wood under there. Some of the wood here, and this is around one of my doors. Some of the wood here, it, it was just paint. And what I learned is termites. I had termites all on the back wall of my house. 
This right picture is even in the bathroom that's on the back wall. They started tearing into the wall to see how bad it was. The studs, we had to replace probably 20, 25 studs in my house. The wood was completely eaten up. We had to get a special crane to replace a stud that was a supporting beam. I didn't know. I saw this fly, but I didn't know what it was. That's ignorance, complete lack of knowledge, awareness. I didn't even know what I saw it, but I didn't even ask questions. I didn't know what it was. And this pest ate up my entire back wall of my house. I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to tell you how much it costs to have it done, but I was just happy that we found it. And they were there painting. The painters found it. So then I had to call some other people, get a special crane to lift up the ceiling, to replace some of those, those uh, wood studs and just really replace. So this pest right here. So if you see this in your house, it's about the size of a mosquito and it has wings. And, and if the wings are open, it looks like angel's wings hanging down. It's a termite fly. Lack of knowledge, education or awareness. And the things ate up my back wall. Thank God we got it fixed and I got termite treatment and everything's good now. So, but get, you better know, I know it. And I'm going to share with everybody else. So you don't go through the same thing. So I want you to know that when we're talking about wealth, anybody that has ignorance of the concepts that we talked about in part one and part two, about net worth, about building your net worth, eliminating debt, living debt free, acquiring appreciating assets, making sure that your money is sound. If if you don't even have knowledge of this, this is one of the this is a a pest that will destroy your wealth building. And this is just one of ignorance. They're just not aware. If if you are learning something new in this, then you are ending the pest of ignorance. If you say, I think I want to know more, I'm going to invite you to go back to the Heart Fellowship Kingdom Wealth YouTube channel, and I want you to watch the Seeds of Wealth. Anytime you learn something new, you are eliminating this pest of ignorance because it definitely will. It definitely will <laughs> erode your wealth building. It'll definitely cause a problem in your wealth building. Now you say, I'm not sure if I'm ignorant or not, because if I don't know something, I don't know that I don't know it, right? I don't know that I don't know that I don't know, right? So I'm going to give you some symptoms of if you are, uh, if, you, if this is a pest in your life when it comes to wealth, I'm going to give you some symptoms. Number one, if you don't have a retirement savings plan, and I'm going to reference that as an RSP, retirement savings plan, that is any any plan that allows you to set aside money for when you walk away from the workforce, if you are in the workforce right now, or if you're an entrepreneur, if you're making money and you're not setting money aside for retirement savings, I think this may be and you don't know about it. And you say or if you say I'm an entrepreneur and I didn't know that I could set aside something. Yes, you can. You can set aside and you can create an IRA for yourself. Depending on the size of your company, you can also set up a, a SEP or a simple for your company. So with that, not having a retirement, retirement savings plan, that could be ignorance. You just don't know about it. You don't, you're not aware. If you don't know what's happening in your retirement savings plan, if you say, oh, I'm not in ignorance, I got a plan. But have you looked at it? If you don't know what's happening in your retirement savings plan, then you're walking this. You're you're kind of doing this ignorance thing when it comes to your wealth, because this plan is probably the biggest investment account that most of us will have in our lives. So it's important that you understand what's happening in it. So if you're one that says I have a plan, but I never look at it, I want you to say I'm going to step out of this ignorance and I am going to go and figure out how to sign on to my plan and how to know what's happening in it on a regular basis. Once a quarter, I'm going to I'm going to say once a year. But if you know me, I'm going to say you need to look at this thing once a quarter. <laughs> OK, if you don't have any savings. And you're just happy go lucky. I'm good. I got my bills paid, just got paid Friday night, going out to eat, doing all kind of stuff, going on another cruise. Here we go, here we go, here we go. But don't have any savings. 
I know we don't want to miss out on anything, but when we start talking about wealth and wealth building, we have to have savings. I don't want you to miss out on this. If you have uncontrolled spending and or debt, if you don't know where your money goes after every paycheck, if you look at the end of the month and not really sure where the money went, but it's all gone, then this is an area of ignorance. You got to be aware, be diligent to know the state of your flocks. And if you have stagnant financial knowledge, you're not growing every you're not growing yearly in what you understand about finances. Trust me, finances are changing and money resources, methodologies are changing every year. How many of you now have a digital money account, whether it's PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, where, you know, five years ago, maybe all of us didn't have that. How many of you are not using checks or have never used a check where 10 years ago, everybody used checks. So you can't just stay where you are in your knowledge. We've got to learn and grow. So if you say, I haven't taken the energy to learn anything new financially, I'm going to say you're really walking in ignorance when it comes to building your wealth because you're not going to get there like this. Now, all of you that are here, whether you're live or on the replay, you know, I want you to tell people that you know that's operating like this because you are here right now. So you're doing the right thing. So I'm going to say, yay, you. As a matter of fact, can somebody put in the comment, yay, me? <laughs> because you're showing up or you're watching this on the replay. So these just being completely ignorant of what's going on, you're, you're not stagnant in your financial knowledge. You're doing what you need to do to make sure that you get at least a refresher on things or learn something new. So celebrate you and just say, yay, me. Amen. So with that, these are some symptoms that you may be operating in ignorance. So what I want you to do here is I want, first of all, if you love the Lord, then I want you to study the word of God so we know what's expected of us. It's important that we know. And when we know the word of God, we know what's expected of us. And so we're not going to stay stagnant. And then I want you to learn more and I want you to do more, not just learning. I don't want you to be a perpetual student that always goes to class and always learning from classes, but never putting it into action. Learn more and do more, because I do want you to know that ignorance is not an acceptable excuse. Think about the parable of the talents. You know, the parable of the talents, you know, he, he says, well, I really I knew you were going to be hard and I didn't think I could really make any money. So I hit it. It was like, oh, you didn't think you could make any money. I gave you what I felt, what I knew you could handle. The resources that you have right now, you can effectively handle that. Otherwise, you wouldn't have it. If it came from the Lord, you can effectively handle that. Does that make sense? So I want you to just be aware that we are intelligent people and we're not going to operate in ignorance. OK, now five pests that damage wealth and wealth building. Number two, pest number two is mismanagement, ignoring the issue. Now, in this case, this is an ignorance because this is where we know what we should do. We know that we're falling short of getting it right, but we're just not taking the actions to change that fact. The difference between mismanagement, ignoring the issue and um and ignorance is that ignorance, you just don't know. I didn't know what that thing was. I didn't know that those were that, that those were the, the larva, th those were the flies from my termites. They they I didn't know those were termites. I don't know if it's the babies or the grown-ups. I don't, I'm not really sure. The this pest guy explained it to me. I didn't know. I was just sweeping them up and spraying, hoping whatever crazy flies these were that they, I, my home defense would kill them. But mismanagement and ignore, ignoring the issue is where I know what those are. And I'm just not doing anything about it. I know what they are. I know what needs to be done, but I'm just not taking the action to do it. Does that make sense? I want to explain, because we may think that uh, mismanagement and ignoring the issue and, and ignorance is the same thing. They're a little bit different. Now, you know, I got a story. Okay. Um. Look in the look, look in the yellow box in this mismanagement or ignoring the issue. We prioritize wealth building lower than the instant gratification items. How many things prompts you to say, I need to take care of that? Mm. Those things that you say, mm, 
I need to take care of that. You know what needs to be done, but every time something else comes up and becomes a higher priority. So when we're operating in this, we know that we need to build wealth. We know what the word of God says. We know that we should be doing this, but we're just not doing it. Take a look at this picture. I'm going to take a sip. Of water. <laughs> you know, I heard these things. I heard something um, running. I thought it was on my roof. And then I could hear them in the walls. Just running. And you know what they were? Squirrels in my attic. Then I was hearing lots of them like fighting. Then I would hear them fighting in the morning. I would wake up to go to work. They would wake up to go to work. And I'd hear them fighting. I could hear little babies. It was whole families of them up there. At first, I didn't know what it was. But then I was talking to a few people and I, I got trees overhanging. I, I have very mature trees in my yard. And so I had squirrels in the attic. Now, once I knew what they were, do you think I took care of them right away? There's a reason that I got a picture of this squirrel when I talk about mismanagement or ignoring the issue. No, I didn't take care of it right away. I'm busy. I'm very busy. I'm, I'm busy. So what you're looking at here, I walked out. Okay, so, so finally I said, I got to take care of that. Every time somebody comes over, my mom comes to town, somebody comes to town, and we hear these, duh, 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 and they're like, what's that? What's that? Is it rats? Mm -hmm. Squirrels. It's squirrels. I learned the difference between rats and squirrels. Rats are, squirrels are really a rat with a tail. But rats will come out at night. Squirrels operate on the same time schedule as a normal human. We, they, I wake up at six o'clock. They wake up at six o'clock. I go to work. They go out in the yard. They go forage. They bring their stuff back up in the attic. So I got nuts and toys and all kinds of whatever they would steal and put it right back up in the attic. So so with that, I had squirrels. I So I called the guy. Finally, I called the guy. I called the pest guy. I interviewed pest guys. I had three or four come over and I hired one. And the first thing he did was found all of the openings where the squirrels could get in. And he sealed up all the openings sealed up all the openings so that they could not get in, nor could they get out. So then what we did is we drilled a hole. There was one exit and we planned where these squirrels would come out. So we wanted to get them out, you know, in a, in a humane way. So the minute we seal those entrances, I heard them all on the roof. They were just running like crazy, trying to get back in, trying to get back in. So I just opened my back door <laughs> And looked up, I had my camera, looked up and there he was looking at me. I'm sure he was cussing because he was like, you done closed up my door. You so selfish. I'm sure he was cursing at me. This is what he looked like when he couldn't get back in. And I took pictures. I took videos of these things because these things were mad. They were mad when I got them out of the house. But I'm going to tell you, it took a long time for me to do this. This was April 2021. I know I had these squirrels in my house for at least four years. I know I ignored the issue. I didn't think, of course, I prayed and screamed and went up there and threw some essential oil cotton balls. And I tried, I even turned a YouTube dog on and just had a dog barking in the house. Try, I'm just trying stuff. <laughs> I tried everything, but I just never really focused on getting them out. And this is where we had the exodus. So this is this next screen is where we drilled this hole and we had these squirrels coming out. And I can tell you, there were about 10 squirrels that came out of here. Mamas, daddies, babies, and they figured out how to get back up in the trap. And they started going back up in the trap. And now they have started chewing again to get back in. Some squirrels, we had to capture them and take them to the next town, take them to Frisco, get them away from here because they were so territorial. They had been in this house for so long that they did not want to leave. They had left babies up there and they were fighting squirrels. I'm telling you. And they are still trying to get back in the house right now. So my pest guy has just had to seal up holes again. And we got some, I said, put the atomic lemonade up there. I'm trying to do this humanely, but if y'all going to try to come back, mm -mm, we ain't going to have that.
So, so basically, this is where you know what needs to be done and you know that you're not doing the right thing. You know, you know that you're ignoring it, but you just don't take the actions to make things happen. Now, let me show you symptoms of this. Let me show you symptoms of this. Remember how we said not having a, a, a retirement savings plan was ignorance because you just didn't know? If you know, then it, it, the ignorant symptoms here, the ignoring is not starting the plan. You know better, but why don't you start one? Not learning what's happening in your retirement savings plan. No savings and no plan to save. You don't have savings and you know you need it, but you're not doing anything. Continued uncontrolled spending or debt. The words in red are the key words in stagnant financial knowledge. So here it's not about you don't understand and you don't know. You just not doing it, even though, you know, now um, that is where you're mismanagement, mismanaging, not not. And you're ignoring the issue. This is a definite damage to your wealth and your wealth building, because as time goes on, time is going to pass. We want you to put wealth building processes in your everyday life. We want to have wealth building in our everyday life. If I if I can get one or two people to declare, I will have wealth building in my everyday life. That's the goal. I don't need you to stop everything, to don't spend anything, to go live in a under a tent or live in your car for six months. No, 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 no. Let's just build, put wealth building in our everyday activities. That's the goal. Okay. So this one, number two, mismanagement and ignoring the issue. Number three, we're talking about five pests that damage wealth and wealth building. Number three is not giving, not giving. Now, instructions for giving are in the word of God. If you don't give, if I don't give for whatever reason, um, the promise is given to those that give. One of the promises that's given is protection from the pests that can destroy wealth. One of the promises that's given in the word of God is to have protection from the pest that can destroy wealth. So if you know that one of those promises is to protect us from the pest, what happens if we're not giving? Mm, I'm going to tell you a story here. I'm going to tell you a story. But first, let's go to Malachi 3. We've heard Malachi 3.10 probably many times in, in churches as we prepare for the offering. Malachi 3.10, this is a King James Version. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, and there shall not be be room enough to receive it. But let's go to verse 11. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. So one thing about, he says, bring all your tithes to the storehouse. This is giving to the building of God's kingdom. OK, I, 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 I give I give to things other than the church. I have my favorite charities that I give to. I give to I will forever give to the Ronald McDonald House in Little Rock, Arkansas, simply because that is the, the uh, place that my brother was able to stay when we were going through a cancer battle. And it was just such a blessing for us because the hospital was three hours away from where we live. So that we thought that was going to be a three hour drive every every day or every other day. And just him being able to stay there. I, I gave so much to the Ronald McDonald House that they sent me a letter and said, Carolyn, why don't you just come to the chocolate ball? The chocolate ball the tickets are like $250, $300 a ticket. And you give way more than that every year. Why don't you just come to the chocolate ball? And I go, well, you know, I'm not giving to go to the ball. They say, you just send us this money unsolicited. So I go, yeah, I could, you know, give it to a few people to go to the chocolate ball, but I didn't want them to misrepresent me, you know, up there, you know, not 
being <laughs> what needed to be. I, I want to, you know, I no, I just said, no, thank you. I'm just continuing to give. Now with that, I'm not going to tell you what you need to do here. You know what you need to do to eradicate this pest. I do have a friend that I do have a friend that is um, <clears throat> on a fixed income. This friend is on a fixed income, uh, an older person. And all of a sudden, this person started having problems with their money. I mean, they, they couldn't understand what was happening. And so I, I sat down with this individual. We kind of got together a couple of times and started looking at it. And and one thing we had to you know, realize is that, you know, there's inflation. Your bills are costing a little bit more right now. So that's OK. You're not doing anything wrong. And yeah, your check is hitting the bank fine. Your Social Security check is coming in. But I looked at everything and I said, where is the giving? And this individual said, well, you know, during COVID, I wasn't going to church. So I, I, I said, I didn't say nothing about going to church. I said, where is the giving? And this person knows the Lord. This person knows the word. This person is mature in the Lord. So I didn't have to teach anything. I just asked, where is the giving? And that's all I did. I don't have to tell you what you need to do. And this individual said, yeah, yeah. So I said, you know what the word says. I said, it's, your money's being eaten up by the locusts. And, and you've got to give protection on this. You've got to honor the word. And I didn't have to, I didn't, you know, as a matter of fact, I, I think I was just real quiet because just being very respectful, this person is much older than me. I'm doing this person a favor. I have several people that I, I just love and they know that I do with money and they like, Carol, Carolyn, can you come and help me? Yes, ma'am. I sure can. So, so I didn't have to tell this person what to do, but they saw their money not knowing where it was going. And, and they were when they were giving, they had money to give money to buy things, money to go places. But now they're just sitting over there in a tight. So and, and I said, just just resume your giving and let's see what happens. I want you to watch things. I'm going to watch things with you very closely. So I'm going to tell you the locusts and the canker worms will eat up. We'll eat it up. This is a pest to wealth building. So I do want you to know if you are not giving to the building of God's kingdom, not giving to United Way, not giving to the Ronald McDonald House, not giving to your family. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about giving to the building of God's kingdom. Okay. Giving to the building of God's kingdom. And you can do other giving as well. But this one is one that he says he will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. You can read it in Malachi 3.11. So you know what to do to eradicate this pest. But do know that this is a pest and we need to eradicate it so that we can get to wealth building. OK, that was number three. We're talking about five pests that damage wealth and wealth building. Pest number four, weary in well-doing. Hmm. Ah, I am sick, sick and tired of doing the same thing day after day. I'm, I'm building wealth, but I don't have a break. I'm not having any fun. I want to be able to just go buy stuff like everybody else. I want to see something on a whim and just be able to order it. But I got all this money coming out of my paycheck for my 401k. I got savings. Now I'm trying to invest some stuff. I'm tired. I ain't got no money. I'm working every day and I ain't got nothing. Yeah, I mean, I got something. I got some wealth building, but I need a break. I need a break. Has anybody ever felt that way? If you felt that way, just say, ouch. Because you may feel like I'm working every day. I'm doing everything to take care of this house and these kids. And I'm, I'm you know, we're not eating out a lot, but I'm, how long does this go on? I, I mean, all my other friends, I see them on the Facebook. They, they going on cruises. I ain't going on no cruise. I see my friends on Facebook. They they out to dinner. I, I look at the restaurant that they went to. That's an expensive restaurant. We can't go there. We said we would save X amount this month. So you're doing all the right things. It's just you need a break. 
and you feel like you're the only one doing this. But I want you to know that Galatians 6 and 9, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. I know you're doing all the right things and I do understand that you need a break. I do understand that sometimes it's like this isn't, I mean, you do need a break sometimes. So I, you're, you're not alone and, and this is not crazy. You, let, me, let me kind of share with you what, what we can do. You say, I don't know if that's me. Here are some symptoms. This, if this is a pest that's impacting your, your wealth building, what happens is you may stop managing to your plan. I'm just going to stop doing it. I ain't doing it enough this month. Mm -mm. I'm just going with it. I'm just going with it. Yeah, count me in. I'm going. Mm -hmm. I'm going. You start spontaneous spending. They got a sale somewhere. Let's just drive around and see where the sale is. Or as a matter of fact, let's just click, click, click and find the sale. and Just start spending stuff. Woo, that's fun. And you don't feel it's working, so you give up. You know, it's okay to stop managing to your plan for, uh, you know, if you say I got a major something coming up in May. May used to be the month uh, that we would have a sports banquet in my family. We would do Super Bowl picks and we would do NCAA basketball tournament picks. And we would have a sports banquet in May. And everybody would come down and we would award trophies to the winners, to the football winner and to the basketball winner. So we would do trophies and dinner and we'd, we'd make a sports banquet out of it in May. So in May every year, I'd say there's no holes. There's no holes barred on my spending. I'm just I'm just going. I'm just going for it. Whatever we want to eat, whatever. I'm, I don't care. I'm just buying it. Y'all don't have to send me no money. I'm just going to do it. I would make this sports banquet be the bomb banquet. People, our friends that would participate in the sports with us through the winter would come from St. Louis, from Arkansas. We have people coming in from everywhere. So everybody stay in my house like a hotel. So it was really fun. So it's okay to do that. But when you don't feel it's working and you don't go back to it, so you give up. So you, it's okay to stop managing to your plan. Just plan to stop managing to your plan. <laughs> but you got to go back to it. Now, what I want to show you is what you can do if this is you. First of all, I need you to know that this pest exists. Just know that this is something that is going to impact your wealth and wealth building. It's not just you. It's a pest. And so with the pest, it frustrates you, but you deal with it. You deal with it, whether you deal with it early or late. If you deal with it late, you may not have any walls left like I didn't when I didn't know about the, the termite fly. But I know I want you to know that this exists and that you'll have to deal with it. I want you to set specific goals, track and measure, because what happens if you feel like it's not working? That means I need you to have some specific goals. By, by June, we want to have saved this by set some dates and some time so that you can track and measure how you get there and be able to measure in a way that shows I didn't make it, but we got we got to 87 percent of our goal. Because then when something starts to tell you it's not working, you can go back and look at your measures and you can say it is working. I know it's working. I got the proof right here that it's working. So you can just stamp out that lie right there. Now, I do want you to include some me money in your in your plan. And I want you to use it. Some me money. Some me money is some money that's just for me. You don't have to tell nobody what you're going to do with it. You don't have to do anything with it. If you don't want, you can go and get bonbons and Wingstop and, and Cheesecake Factory. You can do whatever you want. But I need you to put some me money in your plan and I need you to use it. If you say, I want to just go to Bath and Body Works and get me something. I want to go get a cigar. Whatever you want to do with it. I need you to do that and use it. Because what happens is the enemy is going to tell you that you're not getting anything out of this. That you're just working the pay bills and you know you deserve more. So with that, I want you to have some me money and use your me money. If you want to save it and put it together and go get a massage after a couple of months, do that. And then I want you to buddy up for accountability. So when you're by yourself, that's when your mind starts to, to run. And if everybody else in the household is not that involved with managing to the plan and you're the only one, then you will feel like you're the only one. Then I need you to buddy up, find somebody else that you can get accountable with or hire a coach. 
or come to Kingdom Wealth and we'll have some time. Let's talk about it. So this is what you can do. First of all, know that this exists, that this is real. It's not just you. And I need you to put some things in place to help to combat this. Okay. Now, we are to number five, five pests that damage your wealth and your wealth building practices. And this is charity, not charity. Now, take a look at these pictures. Aren't they just the most darling things? Look at this. The squirrel laying on the, the branch. Oh, my God. Look at the, the rabbit here and then the bunny here. And then there's a rat. Aren't they just the cutest things? They're just the cutest things. They don't look like pests, do they? They don't look like pests. But they're pests. This squirrel or his cousin or somebody chewed my house and got in. We closed it up. They chewed again and opened up my house so they can come in. This is a pest. This bunny, cute, 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 cute. This bunny and his brother and all his cousins came in my backyard and ate all of my salad like it was a free buffet. Nothing but stalks left. No leaves, no lettuce, no, ate the, ate the beans, just a stalk. No leaves whatsoever. This is a pest. This rat mm, will gnaw on cords in your in your house, will eat up power lines. The squirrels will eat up power lines too. Thank God I had no squirrel damage. These things don't look like pests, but they're pests. So when I say charity, not charity, this is when you're using your wealth to quote, help others, unquote. Most times, this is where you're giving to known individuals that need money often. When you're giving to charity, most times you're giving to a condition. You're giving to United Way. You're not giving to somebody whose face and whose fingerprints you can get. You're giving to a condition. That's not what I'm talking about right here. You're giving to known individuals. You're, you're looking at this person. You know them. They don't look like a pest. They look like your children. They look like your cousin. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Often the giving is not initiated by you. When I give to United Way or Ronald McDonald House or any other charity, even giving to my church, I initiated. I made the decision that I was going to give this and this is how much I was going to give. You know that it's not charity when you don't initiate the giving. It was probably solicited from you, solicited from you. And this often becomes a habit for you and for the recipient. Notice that I said help others. It's in quotes because I want you to know, you know, this, this is the sensitive part. This is the sensitive part because sometimes depending on the situation, when you get money in these cases, you're probably not helping. This person will probably ask somebody else next month. If it's a one-time deal and the car broke down and I had to get four tires and yeah, and it'll take me a couple of months to get the money back. That's, that's one thing. But if it's a long story, hmm, the story gets longer every month. Okay. Now I want to talk to you about, I want, there's a couple of things I want to share with you. I have another teaching that I do, and it is called your money persona. This is where we look at your relationship with money, your personality with money. And this is a service that I offer in my business, Money Reverse. And I just want to pull out two of the money personalities and share them here with you, just because I want you to see if any of these tendencies tend to be you when we talk about this subject. One of the money personas that could be possible for you is to be a blessing, a money persona that I call the blessing. And this is where how you feel about money is you think that money is used to serve God by serving others. And this individual that operates in the blessing regularly gives excessively. 
They often extend personal resources as a result of giving. They give all that they can. The target for giving is often faceless. It's more of a cause or an unfavorable condition. Children don't have shoes. There's people, refugees that are in trouble because of the war. So they're often giving to faceless faceless causes, unfavorable conditions. And giving expresses the gratitude of a received blessing. Most people that operate in a strong blessing money persona, they have received blessings. They have, and many times have seen a miracle in their life or in the lives of their family. But these individuals have extreme gratitude to the Lord for blessing or blessings that they've received. And when these individuals operate, they're giving and genuine joy comes from giving. They're not doing this for anybody to see. They're just doing this because they enjoy giving. Now, giving does bring that euphoria to all of us. But this individual goes on euphoria overload. And they know that this is what the Lord has called them to do. Now, they're often remorseful when they overgive because it is possible to overgive. You can't beat God giving, but it's also about timing. The Lord doesn't want you living in a tent because you're overgiving at this time. So with that, sometimes you have they have remorse when they give in times of a shortfall, meaning I gave too much. And they've often experienced a miracle in their life or in the life of a loved one. So this is a blessing money persona. Um, if this is something that that fits you even a little bit. Just put, give me some hearts out there. Just, just put some hearts out there for this one. Now I want to show you another money persona that I want you to consider. Now this one is the DIY savior, the do-it-yourself savior. Now look at here, we got a fire and we got a firefighter here. So with that, the way this individual operates is money is used for power, respect, and oh, I got it. I don't have everything here. So money is used for power, respect, and and uh, let's see. Let me pull it up. Let me pull it up and see. Because I don't I don't have the screen right. Just one second. Because I want to get this right. Okay. Money is used for power, respect, and status in some cases. Now this individual believes that money fixes things. So many times this individual will lead the charge to rescue named individuals. Somebody's having problems. Oh, I'll, I'll help them. I'll help them. So-and-so can't get the rent paid. Okay, I'll, I'll pay your rent. I'll, we'll, we're will we going to take care of this. We're going to take care of this. They'll lead the charge. And many times the individual only have to, only have to um, you know, mention that they're having a hard time and they'll come up with a plan and what needs to be done. Now, these individuals are often extroverted in money matters. So they handle money in a very extroverted way, meaning they're not individuals that are, you know, very cautious and think through things. They're, they're, they're very confident in their money handling. So these individuals also experience euphoria in fixing the problems of loved ones. So it makes them feel good when they fix the problems. And they also enjoy the recognition and the respect that's earned after completing these rescues. So these are the DIY savior. We don't need to call on God. You can call on me. I'm a do-it-yourself savior. So that's a money persona that I also want you to know. If this one fits you even just a little bit, then I want you to just give me some hearts there. Give me some thumbs up on this one. Give me some thumbs up. So with that, I want you to know about these money personas. The reason that I want you to know about these and, and consider them is because we have to take this into account when we talk about this fifth pest. When we talk about this fifth pest, I need you to know a little bit about you. How much of this is your personality and how much of this is you getting caught up in the moment? Because sometimes if you tend to be in these situations, you probably have very strong tendencies about your feelings about money and that you tend to operate the, in these in these manners. So with that. I want you, what we want to do in this case, charity, not charity, 
I want you to avoid giving up your wealth building to help others on a regular basis. One time is not a problem. When it comes back and it's the same story or a different story, same person, at some point you've got to have a different conversation because the enemy is going to come at your wealth building in any way that he can, even if it is your children, if it is your grandchildren. If it is the person that you love the most, that one day you're going to just have to say, mm, we can't do that this time. We can't. You know, I had one individual I was talking. I was teaching something. Um, no, it was something that was on my blog years ago. I had an individual text me one Sunday. I guess they read church. I don't know. It was, you know, three o'clock on a Sunday. And they said, Carolyn, can you send me the link to where it says on your blog? Don't give money to family. <laughs> I text him back and I said, I never say don't give money to family. I, 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 you can go through my blog all you want. That's not out there. I said, but what you probably, what you heard was the Holy Spirit telling you to not do that because that's, that's not anywhere on my blog. You'll never hear me say that. I said, but let me tell you what we studied the last time we were together. And I sent this person a list of all the things that we studied. And I said, I've never said don't give money to family. But obviously this was an issue for this person. I didn't know that <laughs> because when they start saying, tell me where it says on your blog, don't give money to family. I go, it doesn't. <laughs> and it's, this text came out of the blue. So with that, I want you to know what, what tendencies you have what areas you have, what your money beliefs are, because this is a different problem. You're not helping in many cases. In many cases, unless something major changes and the change has to happen with the individual with the issue. How many of you have had issues getting some bill paid? How many of you have had some issue where you just couldn't make it work, where you thought it just wouldn't work out and it was just really hard? And how many of you that had a situation like that didn't call anybody to give you money? Me. I worked it out. I worked it out. I called people. I said, this, this won't work out. I did without things. We, you worked it out. The individual that may be calling you on a regular basis, if that's the case for you, whether you're live here or watching the replay, they probably need to build that muscle as well. You know, one time I get it, but sometimes they never learn how to build that muscle of working through it. So just kind of uh, really work, ask the Lord to guide you. Look at your money personality. If you have the personality that tends to go down this road, I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to show you, is this the right thing for you? Because just your tendencies and how you feel about money may be sending you down a road that's going to permanently interrupt, stop or even eat up your wealth and it can happen. Okay. And that's not what we want. We're here to plant the seeds of wealth. And by you watching this live or coming, watching this on the replay, that tells me that you're interested in considering seeds of wealth and seeds take a bit to grow. They take a bit to germinate, go back to the lesson, plant the seeds. And we talk about what happens when you plant a seed. Now I got some wisdom for controlling pests. Number one, I want you to expect that pest will come. If you plant strawberries, don't you know something's going to come and eat those strawberries, whether it's the birds, uh, whether it's bugs, probably going to be birds. I want you to think that pests are going to come. You're not going to just be able to have a, a, a valuable crop out there and nothing come at it. You're not going to have a whole crop of corn and not have any worms. They're going to come. I want you to expect it because when you expect it, you know which ones are coming and you have a plan that's ready. You know what type of pests are going to show up for the watermelon. You know what type of pests are going to show up for the strawberries. You know what type of pest is going to show up for the corn. You know what type of pest is going to show up for your savings. You know what type of pest is going to come. And I want you to have a plan and have a remedy plan for it. Know what type of poison that you need for the for the, the agricultural pest. Know what you need to do to combat the other pest that's going to come that could eat at your wealth building. So if that's having savings, if that's hiring a coach, if that's getting classes on a regular basis, if that's getting an accountability partner, know what you need to do to remedy these pests. I, list, I listed five out here. And, and what I want you to know, if any of those five pests are something that you think may be potentially eating at your wealth building, I want you to say, 
yeah, I, you know, pest. Just say pest with an exclamation point. You don't have to tell your business. Just say pest. You know, people that's reading the comments won't know. They have to watch the video to know. <laughs> now, I do want you to know that pests only show up when there is a rich crop. The worms aren't going to come if the seed that you planted for the corn was not good seed and did not produce anything. No worms are going to come. They don't want that. You don't want it. They aren't going to come either. So the pests sh show up when you have a rich crop. You know, the pests, the number five, the, the charity, not charity. They're only going to show up if they know that it works. I, you know, my my family members, I, ha I have family members that I have spoken to about Aunt Carolyn's uh, uh, boundaries. And if you come to Aunt Carolyn for money, you, you just ask Aunt Carolyn to get all up in your business. I want to see your bank accounts. I want to see your paycheck stubs. I want to see everything. I want to see your cash app. I want to see where things going. Before I, I sew into that, I got to know what that is, just like a bank would do. A bank is not going to just give you a loan because you need the money. They're going to go all through your stuff. So that's what Aunt Carolyn's going to do. So guess what? Not that many people in my family come to me. They don't because I'm getting all up in your business. You've just invited me to get up in your business. And when they do call, they have it all laid out. Aunt Carolyn, what had happened was, what had happened was, mm -hmm. thank you, baby. And we work through a plan. We work through a, a, a payback plan. And it, it is a very reasonable plan. You can, you can take 12 months to pay me back. And you can start in three months. Get yourself together and start in three months. And they always pay me back early. They always do. I give them a very reasonable plan. Yeah. Okay, so good deal. So with that, I don't want you to give it, give all of your plants away to the pest. Don't. If it's the pest of ignorance, don't, don't, mm -mm. don't let that time pass by and you just don't know what's going on. Me not knowing what those things were caused me to lose a whole wall, you know? So, okay. Now, I do want to tell you some of the truths about wealth. We are not going to stumble upon wealth. You're not going to just wake up one day and go, <laughs> Wow, I'm wealthy. I have more than I need. You can wake up one day and have won the, won the lottery or or have something like that. But with that, that's that's something different. But still, no matter how you get it, if you don't understand wealth, you're going to lose it in two years, just like most of the lottery winners. Now, I don't play the lottery or slots or anything casino. I don't do any of that. The Lord won't let me do any of that. But wealth is not something you're just going to stumble upon. And remember, wealth is a financial condition. It's not a number. Wealth is a condition of having more than you need, having more than you need. And wealth is cultivated by peculiar people. Just like this picture is of a vineyard, you, this vineyard didn't just pop up. Somebody knew what they wanted. They knew that they wanted grapes. They knew that they wanted this many grapes. They knew that the grapes were going to need supporting. So they went out there and they prepared to have this vineyard look like this. And they knew what they wanted ahead of time. Trust me, there's, the stakes were there probably before the plants were there. So with that, it's cultivated, meaning you're taking specific action to get something that you want and you're willing to put in the time and to work toward it. So with that, I just want you to know that that is how wealth works. So we've got to we've got to do that, too. So I want to just give you a review of your net worth. When we look at our target harvest, the net worth is the value of a person's assets minus the value of their outstanding liabilities. This is how you're really going to determine what your true financial condition is. So this is an assignment. We went through this in our last in our session of. Uh, plant the seeds and fertilize. So with that, and then it did give you an assignment to determine your personal net worth. Did If anybody here determined their personal net worth or have looked at your net worth in a, in a recent time, just put in the comments and say net worth. Yes. If you have not looked at your net worth, say net worth dash no. What I want to invite you to do is I want you to determine your personal net worth. We got to know where you are assess your conditions, and then we got to start talking about what the target harvest is. What are we trying to get? That vineyard that I showed you back then, they knew what they were trying to get, so they started working toward it. You're not going to stumble upon it. If you don't, if we don't set out and say what we're trying to get to, we're just not going to get there. 
Now, the best way to get your net worth is to search for, go to Google and search net worth worksheet. And there's several free ones out there. That's the easiest way to do it. If you don't have a net worth worksheet, just find one that's free out there. And it's about putting all your assets down, all your liabilities, and then looking at the difference and determining what your net worth is. And the goal in our wealth building is to increase our net worth every year. Increase our net worth every year. Improve our net worth every year. That's the goal. Now, we also talked about fertilize. Now, when we talk about fertilize, that is where we supplement the existing soil with the nutrients so that you can continue to grow. Every time when you grow something, you take something from the soil. So we've got to fertilize to get the soil back, back um, healthy and whole so that we can continue to grow. We do this to improve what our crops, the, the yield, and also improve the quantity. And sometimes fertilizing is where we're taking away things. We're taking away things that's not good for this growth. Now, we must maintain the health of the soil. Now, for the analogy here, when we're talking about the seeds of wealth, I want you to know that I am the ground. What I am fertilizing is me. You are the ground. I want you to put in the comments, I am the ground. I am the ground for wealth. So when we talk about fertilize, we're talking about things that we need to do ourselves so that we can make sure that we stay in a position to grow and build wealth on a regular basis. It's not a one year thing. We got to keep this soil fertilized. One way you can do that is just exactly what you did here to come here for the money re for the money reverse heart fellowship kingdom wealth and just stay here. We're here every month. Now, the secret sauce to success, I want you to identify your strengths. I want you to perfect them and then apply them to your everyday life. This is how you're going to be successful. I want you to identify what you're good at. We tend to focus on what we're not good at and we're trying and trying and trying. And that's good. We do want to improve in some areas, but I do want you to focus on those things that you're good at and you go wholeheartedly at that. And you are going to be a success today because you're going to be the best you that you can. Now, also as a part of that, we want to improve those things that we're not so good at. But definitely do not go through another day of your life without applying your strengths to your everyday life. Do you have a strength in in encouraging people? Do you have a strength in writing? Do you have a strength in organizing things? Do you have a strength in leading people? Do you have a strength in, in, in building things? Do you have a crap? Do you, are you creative? What are your strengths? And I want you to apply them to your everyday life. And you are going to be more successful every day, starting today. Okay. Now, we got a, an assignment that I want you to make sure that you do participate in. I want you to grow something, grow something indoors or outdoors in a pot or in the ground, seed or starter plant. I want you to grow something. And when you do come back to this video, uh, just hover your camera over this QR code and share with us what you're growing. This is going to give you an opportunity to take pictures. You can do pictures or a short video of what you're growing. Upload it here. Tell us who you are, what you're growing. I asked you probably two or three questions about why you're growing this. And when you started, put some pictures in there, put the date when you started. And then as your plant is growing, then continue to come back here and update us because I want to include some of your growth here in our, in our Kingdom Wealth lessons while we're doing this series. So if you're going to grow something, put something in the comments. Say, I'm going to grow something. I'm going to grow something. Yeah. <laughs> Now, the roadmap to wealth, I do want you to know that there is a roadmap to wealth. We're talking about wealth, but I am assuming that we have rounded these corners and going through spending plan, giving, saving, setting one year goals, let's establish credit, pay down debt, giving, saving, and then setting some longer term goals, three to five years, get to investing and then giving and saving. So giving and saving are these flags that's all around in our, in our money management life cycle. So the assumption here is that you are following this path and that you're 
passing by these flags and have them waving. So with that, if you need some assistance on any of this, I do want you to know our full Kingdom Wealth program hits every one of these flags. <laughs> so again, we talk about it all because we want to be able to have a place where you can come and get some biblically based financial knowledge that's going to help you to live the financial life that the Lord has called us to. So with that, the roadmap to wealth. I want you to follow it. And if there's any flags that you're missing, just go back to our Heart Fellowship YouTube channel and you can find some teachings on that as a part of Heart Fellowship Kingdom Wealth. Now, with our roadmap to wealth, I do want you to know that you have to do the work. I can't do the work for you. You have to do it. But I am very happy to serve you. So let me know in the question, in the comments, if you have any questions that I can answer for you today. And even if you're watching this on the replay or watching this later, come back and just post some questions here. Any place that you're seeing this video, post some questions so that we can get back with you. I want to make sure that I'm serving you in the best way that I can. Now, I want to share with you some things that we have going on. We at Heart Fellowship want you to join us again, please. Our pastor, Cedric and Michelle White, their pictures are in the upper right hand corner. They are here with us as well. I want you to know that we are in Prosper, Texas, 420 South Coit Road in Prosper, Texas. Let me tell you some things that we have going on. The red number, the first thing I want you to do is take a screenshot of this so that you have our call in number up here. It's a long number, but I want you to take that because we have in this call in number we're going to use for most of our prayer services. So we have 15 minutes before the father. That's every Friday from 738 a.m. to 745 a.m. Central Time. So call in. This is where we spend 15 minutes. Our pastor or someone that he appoints leads us in prayer. You can send your prayer request to prayer at heartfellowship.church and join us. We will be standing in prayer with you. We also have SHOP, S-H-O-P, which is Sweet Hour of Prayer. This is every Sunday at 10 a.m. Central Time with a call-in number. This is where we, again, we're praying as a church family. And this is where individuals, not the pastors only, but individuals are praying. We get to, You get to put voice to your prayer. We hear our children pray. We hear our teenagers pray. We hear, we have uh, members at are with us in Jamaica. So you get to hear all of us and you get to stand in agreement and you get to put voice to your prayer. Bring your praise reports as well, because we celebrate here as well, because the Lord does answer prayer. We spend a lot of time in prayer because we believe in it. And then join us for Sunday service, 1230 p.m. Central at St. Paul Episcopal Church. Again, 420 South Coit Road in Prosper, Texas. And you can also join us here on Facebook Live. At the time of this recording, we are coming up on Resurrection Sunday. So if you do not have a place to go on Resurrection Sunday, I would we would love to have you join us here. Our pastor is going to bring us a dynamic message as he always does. So please, I do not want you to say that you have not been invited to attend church on Resurrection Sunday. So join us here. And if you want the best way to learn about everything else we have is to request to be added to our email list. If you can just put in the comment that you want to be added to our email list, put that in the comments and I will get back with you. Get your email address and your telephone number. You can be added to our text group and we'll make sure that you have in, in your possession information about everything we have going on. Now, and then every Thursday night, we have Thursday night teaching. We call it TNT, boom. And then every second Thursday, once a month, that TNT is Kingdom Wealth, where we are giving financial principles to help us to move into wealth managing principles following God's, uh, move into wealth following Christian biblical principles. Let me get it together. So with that, I want you to join us here next month next Thursday even, and then next month for our next Kingdom Wealth. Now, I want to see if you have any questions. I am going to um, stop the teaching and see if you have any questions. Thank you all for joining. We have three minutes and I am going to see if um, I, I appreciate all of your, your comments. Love that they understand that they will be on a plan. Yeah, that's what, yeah. They know it when they call. So if they don't want to get on a plan, they don't call. And I would advise I would advise you to do that as well. We want to teach and we want to help. But I want to make sure that when you're giving, 
in a situation like that, let the Holy Spirit guide you. And if you need to to teach, then that's a teachable moment. Don't 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 waste it. Don't waste a teachable moment. Yeah, pests only show up when you have a rich crop. Those worms are not going to show up if your seed didn't come up. Then you're not going to have just worms out there saying, "Okay, where's the food?" No, they've gone somewhere else. So, yeah, pest. Mm -hmm. Pests that could impact your wealth building. I want you to go back if you need to watch this again and get some information. I'm not seeing any questions. So I am going to pray us out. I want to thank each of you for joining. And, and with that, I just want to say thank you so much. And I pray financial abundance for each of you. I'm going to uh, close us in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We give you praise and honor. Lord, I thank you for tonight's gathering. Lord, I thank you for everybody that's here, everybody that's watching on the replay. Lord, we, we call out to you, Lord. We look to you, Lord, to guide us in the area of wealth. Lord, show us what pest we have that may be impacting us being able to do what you've called us to do, that may be impacting our plans and even destroying our wealth. Lord, we commit to you. We repent for anything that we've done with the resources provided to us that did not line up with your will for our lives and your will according to your Christian biblical scriptures. Lord, we repent for that. We want to move back to the top to operate in a way that you've called us to. Lord, we call you Lord and Savior and we thank you. We we know that you are the only true God and we worship you. Lord, we thank you that in our hearts and in our minds, you're making adjustments where need be as we submit ourselves to you. We bow down and we humbly come to you, Lord, saying, change me. Change me in a way that's needed so that I can continue to move into wealth the way you called us to do. And we will be so careful to give you all the glory and all the honor in your son Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to say good night, everybody. Thank you so much for joining and I will see you next time. Bye.